saying you show up with a streetcar and you can't win. That's what I'm telling you. And he ain't won in right. 20 years. He washed up. You might be right. But I've been he doing it 20 up. years, though. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> the reality TV show Street Outlaws America's List features 25 elite street racers from across the country going head to head in the ultimate battle for supremacy. It's not just a competition, it's the stuff every street racer's dreams are made of. Week after week, adrenaline fueled showdowns unfold as these speed demons push their machines to the limit, vying for the ultimate title of the nation's number one street racer. Among these daring drivers, you'll always find JJ DeBoss. This Memphis star is undoubtedly one of the fastest men in the streets. Over time, JJ has become one of Street Outlaw's most famous racers, especially because of his high speed antics with his 49 Chevy pickup truck nicknamed Old Heavy. However, living fast and dangerously comes with unique consequences, so join us as we reveal what really happened to JJ DeBoss. Hopefully Dennis got the transmission together. Let's roll. And he can get this $500 tonight. Before he was JJ DeBoss, he was Jonathan Day, born to a family of roofers in Memphis on August 10, 1973. For the first 20 years of his life, all JJ knew was how to roof houses. He picked up the family tradition and carried the torch until his passion for cars slowly overcame his duty to his family. JJ would work as hard as he could roofing and spend all the proceeds from the venture to fix up old cars. Money was hard to come by and fixing old cars was expensive. Still, JJ's passion did not wane and it only pushed him to learn the mechanical aspects of these vintage exotics and grow to be an expert. JJ's love for cars stemmed from his father's street racing career. Despite growing up in a religious home, young Jonathan could not say no to the allure and adrenaline high that came with street racing, so he followed in his father's path. His first race car was a 66 Chevy Tunova. He modified this gym by replacing its engine with a 402 big block out of an old Bob truck, and he dreamt of letting it loose on the streets. JJ didn't have the money to compete at the racetracks at that time, so to earn some cash, he turned to street racing, where he learned to be clever or slick to win. One of JJ's signature moves back then was to leave the start line on two instead of three so he could get a jump on his opponent. Now that they no longer count one to three, he still tries to hit the arm drop or flashlight dead on. JJ had what we could call a promising career, but he made some bad choices and wrong decisions led him to prison. JJ has managed to keep the reason why he spent eight years and one month in prison, but has since turned his life around for good. Well, for good when he's not on the track, because behind the wheel, JJ is a speed demon constantly pushing his car to its limits. In the high octane world of street outlaws, where adrenaline fueled races and roaring engines are the norm, January 2022 marked a turning point for JJ and Trisha, the dynamic duo known for tearing up the asphalt together. Little did they know that Fade had an intense curveball in store for them during the filming of America's List. The second episode of the show became a life-altering chapter for JJ and Trisha. Paired up for a head-to-head -head showdown, things went wrong right from the start signal. JJ was substantially slower than Trisha. He then tried to get as much speed out of his vehicle as possible. This resulted in overheating several sections around the engine. An oil line failed, and the hummingbird suddenly turned into a fiery inferno. Trying to avoid his face being burned, JJ steered the car any way he could to slow down as much as possible. In the blink of an eye, JJ's control of the Chevy slipped away, and chaos ensued as the flaming hummingbird collided with Trisha's zip tie, causing her to lose control and drive right into a few park rental automobiles that were there to protect the filming equipment, such as the light towers and cameras. Miraculously, both emerge from the wreckage, but not unscathed. Both street racing cars are confirmed to have had rolled over bars as reinforcement and other safety features. While the exact specifications and recent modifications are unknown, both cars are expected to have over a thousand horsepower, even without nitrous additions. However, Trisha bore the brunt of the accident, sustaining severe injuries that demanded immediate attention. JJ, with minor burns on his face and arm, was fortunate to escape more serious harm. The fiery collision left a trail of destruction on the track and sent shockwaves through the Street Outlaws racing community. Trisha's journey to recovery was no less thrilling than the races they dominated. Emergency surgery became a necessity, with two screws anchoring her hips and undisclosed procedures mending the damage inflicted by her seatbelt. 
the elusive details surrounding her back injuries only added to the mystery, heightening the drama surrounding the accident. Nevertheless, Trisha was released from the hospital into the care of JJ weeks after the accident. However, she spent the months that followed in a wheelchair. She also had to take care of a couple of pulled muscles and various minor burns. This crash was very bad for JJ and his wife, but this wouldn't be the first time he'd be in a life-threatening situation. In 2017, JJ was involved in another crash where he sustained more substantial injuries. He was driving his Sierra pickup on an Arkansas highway at night and was doing around 55 miles per hour when he fell asleep behind the wheel due to fatigue. As expected, it didn't end well, especially for the Sierra. The Sierra struck a piece of concrete, and the 1949 Chevrolet Old Heavy pickup and the 1966 Chevy Nova nicknamed Heifer, which he was hauling behind the Sierra, overturned. JJ spent a few days in the hospital getting treated for a couple of broken bones. As soon as he was released, he got right back to fixing Heifer, and it cost him a small fortune to make it whole again. The Heifer holds much sentimental value to JJ because it was a car he has always owned since his 20s. When it was damaged, he didn't mind how much he had to pay to fix it at any cost. JJ thought the heifer only suffered some cosmetic damage, so after fixing that up, he took it back to the streets of Memphis for some good old racing, only to break wheel studs and roll over twice. Once again, JJ survived the accident, but the heifer had to be worked on to restore it to racing condition. For a man with his past and string of mishaps, one would think that JJ DeBoss would be more careful as he goes about his daily life. If you thought so, you couldn't be more wrong. In 2018, Chris Larkin, a seasoned racer from Missouri, accused JJ of inflicting a brutal assault against him, and he thought he was going to be, you know, ended. This might be a bit over the top, but Larkin truly believed JJ was out to end him, and he was scared for his life. Larkin filed a federal civil complaint at a Memphis federal court naming JJ, the Discovery Channel, and a North Hollywood, California-based production company, Pilgrim Films and Television, as defendants. Larkin claimed he was repeatedly hit on the head and body by JJ and his associates as they yelled obscenities at him and asked him to get his own show. Larkin identified JJ as the culprit for the assault after he was shown a six-person photo array. After the alleged attack, he was hospitalized with a chipped front tooth, a busted lip, a black eye, a herniated disc, and a torn left meniscus. In the lead up to this unfortunate incident, Larkin challenged along with some other racers on Facebook to come race in Memphis for a substantial cash prize. The stakes were high, with the promise of a film episode amplifying the excitement. To enter the competition, Larkin had to fork out $1,000, with the prospect of pocketing $30,000 if he emerged victorious. Optimistically viewing the race as a fair and spirited contest, Larkin was blindsided when it transpired that JJ, with the apparent endorsement of the show's producers, had orchestrated a Machiavellian strategy. JJ's team was given the green light to employ every underhand tactic imaginable. Shockingly, when the situation escalated beyond acceptable levels, the producers remained passive spectators, failing to intervene, even going as far as ensuring they got a good shot of Larkin's face. The aftermath of the race took a legal turn as JJ faced the repercussions of his actions. A month later, Day was apprehended and charged with aggravated attack, ultimately securing his release on a 30,000 surety bond. As the legal saga unfolds, Larkin is seeking justice and pursuing compensation amounting to $5 million. However, the severity of the case is underscored by the fact that, as of now, JJ has evaded indictment. A pending lawsuit is apparently not enough to scare JJ into putting his daring acts on hold. In November 2023, a man known as Randy was filmed holding on the back of Old Heavy as it ripped down the Darlington Dragway. In response to the stunt, the World Drag Association announced they would no longer sanction events at the Darlington Dragway because the incident with JJ DeBoss was classified as safety and insurance violations. In return, the Darlington Dragway put out a statement saying that their top priority was safety for both races and spectators, and they will no longer allow JJ DeBoss to host events at the Dragway in the future.